Hello, this is essentially three of three video in a series of different videos on this particular monitor. In this one, I'm actually gonna go through the settings and its effect on image quality using contrast, colors, and so you can actually see how much it washes out, and of course, really fine color tones as well. And one thing to note is the firmware version for this particular monitor is 030. And one thing I do hope for is a future upgrade for the firmware because a lot of people, at least for the 4K version, and this is probably gonna be exactly the same, are complaining about the KVM switches not working properly. List your experience below in the comments. Did you have a problem or is it just a silly kind of workaround? I wanna know and I'm sure everyone else wants to know as well. Mouse bungee, I show about this in part one and I still have it here. You might wonder, why do I still have it? Because I charge my wireless mouse and when I'm not charging it, I tuck the cable away and that works perfectly for a wireless mouse that needs charging once in a while. So yeah. Are you a content creator looking to up your game? Check out AE Juice. In fact, I use the facts from AE Juice for my own videos. A lot of my thumbnails have their emojis because hey, it works and not overly expensive. Sometimes they have sales and they have the I want it all bundle. So make sure it's compatible with your editing software before purchasing. Or are you looking for more music and sound effects beyond what AE Juice sells? and you want a lifetime subscription, mm -hmm. check out audio. Links in the description below. And in fact, that's what I also use is audio for my music and sound effects. Install the gaming OSD. Links in the description of this video to download that from MSI's website, because this is where I'm gonna go through to actually do the settings. And the software clicking inside the button, toggle buttons behind the screen and it's a little control pad and it can be quite annoying to use. So sometimes the OSD is the better option, but don't always trust it. Because sometimes your settings won't be what it says when you use the software. And once you have the gaming OSD set up, you go to the opposite side of the power button, which is this white light here. Go to the opposite side of the screen and you press the button here and the gaming OSD pops up just like so. So let's get into this and go through some different settings. So right now I have all these different swatches open. This is the contrast, we're on sRGB. This is what an artist would use. And thank you Steve or Tim at Hardware Unboxed for letting me know two days after I made my second video and mentioned about sRGB, not being sure if it's 10-bit or not, that it has the full range of color gamut. It's just that the sRGB is locked to that gamut while you still have the full range. So we have nice bright white and nice dark dark and you can see a nice drop off evenly for the contrast. And here are the fine tones which you may not all pick up on camera. So I have this one that has bigger gradient changes. So you can see when things are very oversaturated here very clearly. Now what I wanna start with is eco mode. This is what it's out of the box. Everything is just, especially reds, just way too saturated, too dark. It's just not an enjoyable experience I find with eco mode that's out of the package, but of course we can change it out easy. Now going to display P3, one thing I found personally is it's a little bit too dark and a lot of time I'll prefer to use display P3 with night vision on, but watch what happens to the color tones. Right here we got a bit of washout, all in the reds, greens, light blues and blue. But of course, if you're playing a game and you're looking for people in the shadows, that'll be a good setting to use. And I find display P3 is a little bit too dark when watching movies. Adobe RGB. This is a setting I decided I prefer because I don't need night vision on to enjoy it. And I can see all the different color tones and there's no oversaturation on any of these here. And that is great. However, you're gonna find that the contrast of sRGB is just a little bit lighter than Adobe RGB. So let's go to that. And of course the brightness on sRGB is a little bit high. It might be too bright for you. Of course you can turn that down. I prefer 70% for my brightness. And contrast on all these settings, this contrast slider is locked unless you're going all the way up to user. So that's something to know. And user without a cali color calibrator, Good luck getting it accurate because it's just, for me personally, it's, it's way too hard. Now if I go to office, I don't know who in office wants things saturated like this. This is insane. Oh, contrast 100%. Yeah, okay. Movie. Image enhancement set to weak. 
we'll go over enhancement in a bit. And oversaturated, 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 a little bit here and a little bit in the blue tones. Yellow seems to be good though. Anti blue light. It's quite dim and it looks a little bit yellowish and everything's overly saturated. Just not a enjoyable experience there. RPG. Well, right here, the violets are oversaturated. Mm, greens a little bit and blues for sure. RTS, ooh, wow, that's bad on the contrast, really bad. Okay, RTS is gonna make you lose a bunch of white light tones. So it'll become white, washed together. And look at this violet, wow, red, yellow, green, blue, and wow, that's just, that's bad. RTS is not a good setting. Racing, it's pretty much the same as RTS. It's just horrible. Look at that. All crushed together. Can't even see the differences. FPS, let's see how you turn out. This one's not too bad, but I see some sharpness around the text. That might be a problem. It's, oh, that's why it's medium image enhancement. So if you go too high on this, it actually is not good. You get haloing happening. Let's see if you can actually see that right now. We're just gonna go strongest right now, just to see if you can see that haloing around here, especially. I'm gonna go back to medium where it belongs. Okay, let's go to user. And user, now you can use all your sliders. However, accuracy, that's the problem. It's all oversaturated. So let's go between sRGB and look at the tones here, the greens and everything, green, red, blue. And if you go to sRGB, it's more of a mint green. So Adobe RGB gives us a little more saturation, makes colors a little more fun, especially when gaming. So right down here, if we scroll down, we can see refresh rate. Turn it on, we can see the refresh rate in the corner of the screen. So right now at 165 hertz, and if I wanted to get the higher setting, I just press this, DP overclocking. You'll see it's 170 hertz because I made my own custom refresh rate. KVM, I've never used it, so I can't tell you how the switch works. However, there are a lot of complaints on the 4K version, and it's the same company, released at the same time, so I'm thinking there might be issues with KVM uh, crosshairs. So we choose a crosshair, we press play, it now makes crosshair on the screen. You can change the position right here, and move where crosshair is located. I'm gonna turn that off, pause. Okay, so sound tune, this is if you're wearing headphones, and you want to tune your headphones on the back of the monitor. There is no built-in speakers. Ambient RGB lighting, oh, that's to change the brightness based upon your sensor at the bottom of the screen. It's not to turn it off. HDCR, this is a dynamic brightness and dimming of the screen based on content on the screen itself. I personally do not like using it, but hey, each to their own. Color temperature, uh, if we change the color temperature, we can see we throw things way out. So cool was bluish, warm is yellowish. You can customize your own. And go to customize, we can change our red, green, and blue sliders. Image enhancement, that's a sharpening feature. We can be good to sometimes bring out a little bit extra sharpness, but it's very small in this particular monitor, the difference. But when you go strong, this is crazy. I'll show that in a moment in a game. Night vision, watch what happens, I use night vision. Okay, I'm gonna go slide this over from off to normal. You'll see these get washed out. And this is starting to get lighter here. Contrast is getting lighter again. More washed out, more washed out. Strongest, even more washed out again. And you're losing a bunch of your different tones and contrast. It really ruins your images when you get right up. Normal's not so bad. It's great for gamers. In some cases, personal preference again. Now let's check out image enhancement using Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay, let's go down to image enhancement and watch how bad things get. We're on a week right now, which is not a big problem. Makes a small difference. We have a little bit of white lines and a little bit of alias happening here. I'm not sure if we can see that, but you have a bunch of little white dots. Let's see what happens to go to off. You can barely notice that now. And as we go higher, it gets worse, worse, and just that'd be annoying to actually play like this with all this alias happening. It happens on mostly lines, straight lines. It is night vision. Watch what happens to the contrast. Sure, it looks brightened up, but then you lose all your shadows and everything else. It looks kind of washed out. Let's go back to normal in a sec. So there's normal. Yeah, it's not bad, at least on this screen. 
Okay, let's try image enhancement. So I don't see too much difference, but if we can see in, I don't know if we can see it in the camera itself, but it does sharpen up the threads and stuff, just a little bit. Now if I go higher, it's going to sharpen up a bit, but then we actually have a bit of aliasing around the images, which is really hard to see in this particular game. Medium, strong, and strongest. Sebastian writes, Happy New Year to you. Do you by any chance know how many dimming zones this display has? It doesn't have any, by the way. Zero dimming zones, it's just either on or off. The image comparison to the LG looks pretty dramatic. The MSI is way ahead of terms of color vibrance, whereas the LG images seem to be all muddy. That has a lot to do with quantum dots. And of course you can change the LG, but this monitor is much sharper and more vibrant, period. Ahmed Ba commented, you made me make a decision, so thank you. I'm going to buy it for my PS5. I have one question though. How have you seen input lag? Is there any delay somehow? In terms of this monitor, I've seen zero input lag. In terms of monitors, the 4K version might be a bet better option for the PS5, by the way, because you can do 120Hz at 4K. However, 60Hz gameplay is not a problem with this monitor. Check this out. 60 frames per second. Been around the game for over 15 minutes. Now let's check out viewing angles using the intro screen paused from Steve of Gamers Nexus. His intro logo is really cool. You can see it dim a bit from over top. Let's go down below. And to one of the sides. And the other side, which I'm kind of limited for distance because it goes blurry from being too close by camera. So viewing angles with this particular monitor are great, however, by eye straight on, definitely looks the best because the contrast really pops. So you may be wondering about this monitor, the MPG321QRF-QD, or the 4K version, which is the MSI MPG321UR-QD. Well, if you're a photo editor, the other version, the 4K version, because it has a wider color gamut. That won't really affect you in terms of gaming. This one's faster. Done. Period. And in terms of frame rate, talk about, let's say you're playing 150 frames, 1440p on this one. Go to 4K, you might be around 90 frames per second or 85. So, yeah, that's not going to be a good experience. Please list your experience down in the comments below. How do you find this monitor? How is it with your gaming consoles? Are you enjoying it? What are your thoughts? What settings do you use? Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.